She was born when the leg was missing, the right foot. She was missing. It was very difficult for her to walk, to play also with the other children. She can be lonely. But when she was given the leg, she was able to run with others, play with others. When we give a child a prosthetic limb, we're allowing them to walk, we're allowing them to go to school, and we're allowing them to participate in their family and community lives. There's thousands of children in Uganda in need of prosthetic devices. In a place like Uganda, there's a huge lack of prosthetists. In fact, we believe there's probably 12 prosthetists to serve the entire country. For over the past decade, we have known that there's a shortage of 40,000 prosthetic technicians. It would take another 50 years just to train 18,000 more. For Korsu Hospital, one of the challenges we have is the length of time it takes a technician to produce a prosthetic device. It's a long procedure, custom feeling, modification, uh, molding. For it, you have to really concentrate. Given the fact that the manual process of creating a prosthetic takes up to a week, that means that each prosthetist is taking one week to build a prosthetic. That means there's about 12 prosthetics being made potentially per uh, week uh, in Uganda, in the entire country. And we wanted to see if it was possible to speed that process up using 3D scanning and printing technologies. We've basically created a process which mirrors, in many cases, the, the manual process, just in a digital environment instead of in a manual environment. Instead of plaster casting, we use a 3D scanner to capture the external shape of that residual limb. Instead of rectifying that shape by adding or subtracting plaster, we use 3D modeling software to basically add or subtract those materials. And instead of wrapping it in polypropylene in kind of physical world, we do something very similar in the digital context, wrapping that shape to create a socket model, which we then print on a 3D printer. So we've tried to kind of parallel or conserve aspects of that manual process uh, into the digital process to also facilitate the transfer of knowledge and the growing expertise of prosthetists that are already skilled. It's a tough learning curve actually because you're learning a lot of new skills about how to operate in digital space. They are teaching you to make your work easier. Like you take short time doing your work now. It's like you're developing from what you already know to another stage. With this method, we could easily save 80% of the time in producing a device that would mean that although there's a shortage of technicians in Uganda, at least for the technicians we have, we can use them more efficiently. Imagine that a patient who needs a socket, rather than spending a whole week here, they may only have to spend one day here. This technology also is good. I know it can help my sister when she has grown. faster and more comfortable and fitting on the body. When you're moving, just move freely. Yeah, without any problem. Corsu Hospital, the University of Toronto, Autodesk Research and CBM Canada have all brought unique skills and expertise to be able to produce a prosthetic limb for a child. Bringing those different groups together it increases our capacity to truly intervene in these, you know, what we might call real wicked problems in society.